In the following set of tutorials, we're going to take you through designing a magazine layout in InDesign CS5. So the first thing that we need to do is find the article that we're going to be using, and this is on creativelatitude.com. found an article called The Secret Life of Symbols by Maggie McNabb, and it's a great article that works well because it talks about graphic design and Fibonacci sequences and the difference between Apple logo and IBM logo and a lot of other information interesting information that relates to us as designers. So this is a great place to come and find articles um, about design. The next thing we're going to need is InDesign CS5 and then also a version of Photoshop. And the reason we need Photoshop is so we can edit the images we're going to use. Now I've organized a bunch of images for you already but you can of course use any images that you find yourself if you choose to use different images. Anyway um, in InDesign we need to create our document and let me go back to the normal setup. There we go. Um, so I'm going to go to New Document if I can get there. There we go. And uh, I'm going to use the basic print setup and I have changed my setup to uh, use inches instead of picas and we're going to start off with four pages. Now I'm going to leave pretty much everything else alone like gutters and and margins. However, I am going to change my columns to six columns. And the reason why is because most magazine layouts use either two or three column grids. And uh, this is a nice way of providing the ability to use both within our magazine layout when we have six. Now, of course, professional layouts often use 12 or 16 column grids. And the reason why is because then you can do two, three, four, six. Um, columns within one article. It gives you a lot more uh, creative freedom when you have that much uh, more um, columns to deal with. Anyway, we're going to have four pages, six columns, and print size. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is go down to the typography setup for um, our panels. And the reason why is because that way we're going to have access to a lot of the panels that we use um, during the project. Um, very easily. It's a lot easier than going to each individual window when we need them up here. So the very first panel that we need to go to is pages so we can set up our multiple pages. Now I don't want to separate the page 1 and 4. If you try and drag them next to each other nothing happens. So we need to right click and allow the document pages to shuffle so we can put page 4 next to page 1 and then create two spreads. Now let's double click on page one and that's where we're going to begin designing. So I can close the pages and now what we need to do is get some of the basic elements that we're going to be designing with. So if I go to Creative Latitude and I select the first text, The Secret Life of Symbols, that's going to be what we use as our title. So I'll just click back in InDesign and then paste that and move it up a little bit. We're also going to need our byline. So I'll select by Maggie McNabb, copy that, go to InDesign, and paste it right back in the center. Move it up. The next thing we need is our first paragraph. So let's select our first paragraph, copy and paste that over to InDesign. And that's basically our document, I mean our first paragraph is kind of going to go down a little bit like that. Now what I'm going to do is get the rest of the article that I need. So I'm going to start at I've Explored, going all the way down and clicking right after Making Sense. Now about the art author is also important information, but I'm going to separate that so it can be a call out. Now on the next page, I'm going to paste this and stretch it across. And don't worry about the fact that it doesn't seem like it's going to fit just right. Let's go ahead and click on that plus and move the rest of the content to the next page. And we can just click and drag. Now we're going to have to readjust that as well. And you can take that all the way down if you want. And you'll see that our article basically has finished there. Now we're not going to be using all of our text in one big column like that. I just wanted to kind of move it over. Next thing that we're going to need to do is get our about the author information. So I will copy that down with down to effective graphics or maybe through the copyright. Why not? 
and copy that into my document into this last page. That way we have access to it when we want to use it. Excellent. Now going back up to the top, um, we're going to begin by setting up some very simple text styles so that we understand that we're going to need text styles in our document. So the very first thing that we want to do is create some sort of text style for our um, opening uh, text, our, our title. So um, in order to edit this text, we have two ways. We can go to the Type tool, and that will actually come up with our options up at the top. And so we can now adjust size, like we could make it all 36. But the problem is that you're always having to press the control key to get back to the black arrow, so you can scale and move things around. So instead, if I just click on the black arrow and then bring up the character panel over on the right hand side, I have the ability to change a lot of those items as well. Now I'm not going to get everything, but at least I'll get some of the main things. Now we need to use a font um, at the beginning, so the question is what font do we use? Um, so let's see. I'm going to look for fonts that are pro fonts, and I want to find a pro font that has um, some sort of a boldness to it, which would be kind of nice. And I can see um, that we have the Trajan Pro, and that's a pretty common, common uh, font to use for our opening because it's already kind of bold. It's got the uppercase that we need. So hey, let's use it. Now I am going to separate the secret life of from symbols. That way I can make that one different placement. So I'll just make that box smaller and then click and drag to make another box for symbols. Now we can adjust the text inside that to make it larger. So maybe we'll make that 60 or even 72 and let's see if we have got a bold in there. So we do. Let's extend that out. There we go. Now symbols is a little bit bigger than the secret life of. That makes that a little bit more exciting. Now for Maggie McNabb, you'll see she's already in her um, name is already in Minion Pro, so we can keep that, but maybe we want to change something about it. Maybe um, we want to change the font size so it's a little bit smaller, so it's not quite as um, big. The next thing that we're going to look at is our basic um, paragraph styles. Now, I'm going to just, you know, for the interest of time, use the styles that we have here, but do be aware that we do need to look at that font and see what type it is. Right now, this is what's called a serif font, and that's going to be great for documents that we want for legibility. But it's pretty common nowadays to use sans serif fonts. So, one of the fonts that we might consider using for our body text is this Myriad Pro, which is um, one of the um, sans serif fonts, which allows us to uh, have a little bit more modern look to it. So it actually works well um, between the two where we've got this up here with the serif fonts, and then when we start our um, body text, we'll have a sans serif font. So let's try it out, see how it works. Now what I'd like to do with this first paragraph is give it some sort of style. So I'm going to go ahead um, or I'm going to save this as a style as well as save these as a style. And the way I'm going to do that is use the character styles and paragraph styles. The first thing that we want to start off with is paragraph styles. So I'm going to go to paragraph styles and I'd like to make a paragraph style for this particular um, first paragraph. So one way to do it is just to click on new style and then double click on that name to change it. So this will be first paragraph. Another way to do it, if I go back up to the page, is by placing our text inside there and going to the new icon here. If I go to new paragraph style, it automatically comes up with it. So that way I would give it the name automatically. Either way that you do it, it doesn't really matter. The, the difference is this. You'll notice that right now I made a style, but it hasn't been applied. So I need to click on byline after it. Whereas with the other one, it automatically applied it when I created it because it forced me to double click on it again 
um, when after I made the style. So that's the way I suggest doing it. Anyway, I'm going to place my my um, eye drop my sorry my eye bar text bar here somewhere within this um, uh, title text and do the same thing where I'll create a title style and then double click and call that title. Now notice that I chose the small type not the large type because the large type has actually been edited so we might need to create a new style specifically for that. The problem is is that what if I really wanted what if I wanted the secret life of um, the secret to also be large like symbols. So it's actually a benefit for us to use a character style at this point. So we can say well this one's larger and bold but it's still part of the title style. So if we change our font for our title this would also change fonts but it would still be larger and more bold. The way we do this is we go to our character styles and I'm going to create a new style here which is large title. Now we could select other text and give it that style as well. You'll see that does kind of make it difficult to read, but it allows us to have a lot of flexibility. We're going to do the same thing down here in our first paragraph, where we take the very first text, and I've just double clicked inside there, down to intangible, and we're going to make this uppercase just like the other text at the top. And you'll notice that this is within a paragraph. So if I go over to my paragraph settings, you'll see first paragraph is um, the style that we're currently using, but we've changed that text, so we're getting that plus. Now, if we wanted to override it, we would have to Alt-click to clear that. But we don't want to override it. We actually want to go back. Whoops, first paragraph. Um, we want to change that to the uppercase. We could even use... Uh, subcase if we wanted to, but I like it all uppercase just because it really makes it stand out. And I'm going to go to character styles and change, uh, make a new style and call this all uppercase. Excellent. Now we could use that style anytime we want it, which is kind of nice about using um, a style like that. Now, when we come over to our actual article, we're going to be also wanting to create some sort of styles. So I'm going to create my first, um, I'm going to select my first um, paragraph, and if we want to be consistent with the other one, we used the Myriad Pro. And I'm also going to take my scale down to 11, so I need to select a little bit larger text down to 11, you'll see it automatically adjusted my um, letting, and that's good. We'll just do 11. So the other one is larger. We'll have larger text on our opening paragraph than we will on the regular body text. But anyway, I've created um, a style where it's 11 point Myriad Pro, and I'm going to create my body tag, or my body style, under paragraph styles this is going to be my basic body style. So let's double click and call this body text. Now I can select the rest of the document just by selecting all with control A and click on body text and you'll see it applies the same exact settings. Now that we've got our body text for the rest of the document let's go ahead and, and save our work and go on to the next tutorial. So I'm going to save over what I've got here and uh, go on.